What's up, everybody? Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, kind of a, a special night, I think. Um, you know, um, it was a little uh, wild in the making. You know, uh, it took a little bit of work to kind of get all these guys together. But, you know, um, you know, uh, really, really happy to be able to get these guys. And, you know, blessed that the timing worked out to have these guys all sort of come on. You know, um, we ran a story, I think it was on Friday. Um, you know, we um, it was a game of the week. We do these flashbacks, you know, with everything going on COVID. We, we wish we could cover games, but, you know, they're kind of few and far between. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, we, we talked to, to Coach Rod York about it. And, you know, I think, you know, he obviously, you know, it meant a, a great deal to him. And I think, um, you know, getting that first one was even more special with the group of guys that he had, um, you know, playing for him. And so, um, you know, I, I, it's it's really um i'm really really stoked to have these three guys on and uh you know um you know so well, just uh you know a big shout out to kaimana padello and andrew toby and and mackenzie milton how's it going guys how's it great so um you know uh i i think it's maybe been a little while since you guys have all seen each other you know like uh how is it kind of How's it kind of this little mini reunion? You know, I, I guess it takes scoring live to, to make this happen. You know, um, uh, you know what's what sort of the um, you know that bring back sort of all these memories of what you guys did over the course of you guys' careers as Trojans. Yeah, it's like a nostalgic feeling. Just miss all the boys, you know. Wish we could go back to high school and do it all over again. Yeah, just seeing all the boys out here, you know, D one. Uh, level everybody's doing their thing and they're reaching their goals and everything it's just seeing the boys ball out uh, on the level that they're at right now and like Straight looking back at how we're all together <laughs> Straight yeah. hammers out of Milalani <laughs> and I'm just grateful to be on the same chat as the infamous Mackenzie Milton and Andy Toby you know just seeing them seeing them do what they did on the national stage just you know it's just awesome to be able to see them and reconnect after all this time um you know but um you know before we jump into it you know maybe just briefly um you know obviously you know a lot of people know what's happening recently with with, with kenzie so we'll get into that but um andrew like sort of what's up with you i mean you're um you're officially uh an alumni of, of kansas now or uh what, what's been going on yes sir so i was a uh, it's great feeling being the first one in my family to uh, ever graduate college or even step foot on a college campus or anything. So being the first one in my family, is, it's a humble uh, feeling and it's like, it's a blessing. And it's like giving me room for my uh, young ones or my younger brothers and sisters that they can actually reach that, uh, that level if they put in hard work and everything. And uh, yeah, I just graduated uh, with uh, honors and everything. And uh, also it's just, uh, now I'm moving on from my football career into uh, the medical field, nursing. So nice. just right there, I'm just uh, taking a step at a time, but it's a great feeling to actually have that like degree with my own name on it. Like I nice. put in that word. Nice, nice. And uh, Kaimana, what's been, uh, what's been up at you, man? Um, same thing, shoot, just, you know, graduated, was able to get honors, get into the you know, working world now. I'm currently in a trade right now working at Brother Dayton Fruits, um, that company. Nice, nice. Um, you know, just learning a trade, just trying to figure out what I want to do. But I mean, it's been exciting. You know, I've been a student athlete from high school, from little to all the way to college. So just kind of going out, experiencing the new world. It's just, you know, I'm excited to see what's out there. Yeah. So, um, you know, like we, we can just, we'll just jump straight into it. But, you know, I think like, uh, you know, uh, this season, at uh, that 2014 season, um, you know, uh, I think there was a lot of expectation, obviously, for for your team, you know, but there were obviously at the same time, you know, a lot of teams in the way. And, uh, you know, I think like, uh, you know, but to get to this this stage with the, um, you know, this in this championship game against Punahou, um, talk talk a little bit about, let's start with Kenzie, talk a little bit about, you know, what, what were the nerves for this? You know, like what was going through all your guys' head, you know, through the season? up till now um i don't think it was too much nerves we just knew he was playing a really good team in punahou um played them the year before and just offensively they had everyone coming back on defense um they had 
a bunch of stud linebackers like Saitui Moyai, Ronnie Lakalaka, Kalama Chung, um, Canton Kamatele. They had, they had a really good defense. So, um, but you know, fortunately, we were able to put up a lot of points early, and then there you are. they kind of shut it. They kind of shut us down in the second half, to be honest. But you know, thankfully the D held it down in the second half, and you know, he was victorious. Um, Kaimana, you know, um, you know, like, uh, like, like I was <laughs> mentioning before we get on, got on, you know, there was obviously a lot of offense in this game. You know, I think over a thousand yards was, uh, I think the count, but you know, um, talk about what, what, what you guys did defensively, you know, it was, it was obviously bend a little, but not break, but you know, what, what was the expectation for you guys offen defensively, you know, th this season, or especially in this game? Um, well, we knew they had, you know, just talent all across the board, very similar to our offense. You know, with their running back, Wayne Talapapo, receiver, Connor by Noah, and just the other studs they had. But, but, you know, in the first half, it was definitely tough. I mean, they really was just running the ball on us. And, you know, we we're just trying to figure out, you know, how we're going to stop them. And luckily, we had some big plays from um, Tui Valley Purcell with the pick six, you know, the force fumble at the ending of the game. But, you know, the biggest thing was just trying to get stops because we knew our offense would score once they had the ball. So it was. You know, we're just trying to get a stop and get off the ball last so that they can win us the game. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about that play. So, you know, I think that that Purcell interception, I think, like, you know, it, it kind of was like a like a turning point play. Like, what happened on that play? Um, what, what sort of what was your guys read and, and sort of what happened? Well, I think just from it was just all him. Literally, he, he just, you know, played it perfectly. You know, he read two routes, played high to low, and he just broke on the ball. And he just made a really great play. You know, not really much of a defensive scheme, just something that he did individually. You know, him just being very talented and just understanding the game. He was able to just make a play like that, which really shifted the entire momentum for us. Hey, um, you know, and, and, and Kenzie or maybe Andrew, you, you can chime in too. But, you know, I think, like, obviously, I think for the general the general fan base, you know, obviously a lot of what Mililani is known for is predicated on what happened offensively. But, you know, like how important or how critical was what the defense did for you guys that season? You know, do you, any, any plays come to mind besides obviously like that Purcell interception was big and, and that and the forced fumble. But what are some plays that come to mind for you guys, uh, what you guys were able to get from your defense? So they, they turned the ball over a lot and, you know, they they brought some exotic pressures too. With, you know, Coach Stills um, dialing stuff up and, you know, like you said, I felt like there was a bend but don't break defense and they always played, you know, relentless. So we always had good battles and good looks and, um, throughout the week. And honestly, I seen Ty make that play all the time in practice. So just him doing it in the game, like, you know, he'd, he'd catch me sometimes in practice and pick me off. <laughs> And I think him playing receiver the year before helped him a lot and set him up for that. Yeah, Andrew, you know, so obviously it's you guys face that that defensive front like every day in practice, you know, like, um, you know, like Kenzie said, and it, it's a bend, but don't break sort of a, to an extent. But, you know, like, you know, like like what what did they do to help prepare you guys week to week to, to be able to you know execute offensively? Uh, there's something like with their front line, like how we had Rex, Manu, uh, Kahe, we had Kaimana, we also had Faru. Uh, just those uh, people up front were like a challenge every time during practice. We we're always like butt heads and, you know, we talk, talk to each other, talk trash. You know, we just try to get in each other's head and try to get us ready. And I mean, ultimately, like since we played Punahou twice in a row for the state championship, that first time, like we were, like that was our first time ever entering that type of uh, atmosphere. And then when we did it the second time, we knew already what we what to expect and everything. So like that, right there, and like during practice, just getting on each other and everything, that like really like helped us a lot, and like kind of mold us to like win the championship. Yeah, for sure. Um... You know, one guy that uh, you know, I had, I talked to him a couple of a couple of months ago. You know, kind of when we started doing all of these sort of look back things, and um, you know, he's obviously playing still right now. But you know, one guy that we'd be sort of remiss to not bring up is um, is Babai Malapai. And uh, you know, like I was saying, this is uh, this is a this is one of these uh, plays from early in his career. And uh, uh, Andrew's first time you see, you you didn't see this till now, but you know, talk about sort of uh, you know. Is this sort of emblematic of what you you get from Malapai? Oh yeah, 
the way how he exploded through freshman year and everything. I played with him since like we were young. We're playing PYA sports, and me and him been together from uh, uh, intermediate all the way up to high school. And just like seeing him produce from when we were young, and he still has that same work ethic that he still has, and he's producing it at a high level, a Div- Division One uh, school. It's like really amazing because you you see nothing but hard work that that guy put in and just like bringing it back to the championship like he put a lot on the line with everything and like I'm grateful for like having him in my life and like all the boys right there too that's on the screen like Mackenzie and Kamana because literally without them we wouldn't be in the situation at all. Hey um and Kenzie um you know having a guy in the backfield like like Vi um like uh like how how important was it or how how much did that help to have um someone like him in the backfield for you guys running the ball i mean it was everything you know he set the tone just from you know, not just running the ball but like from off-season workouts to you know just the way he carried himself is like because i honestly get by like a lot of the credit for the success we have and like the success that I feel like a lot of us had into college just, you know, he's a culture changing guy. And like when he came to Milani, like, I feel like just his presence and like, you know, when Andrew came to Milani, like their presence, like kind of flipped the culture. Like, you know, we grinded all season long and, you know, I mean, and then like, obviously his play shows for himself, but just the work ethic and like the way he carries himself you know, he's second to none. That that guy is that guy's unreal. Um, did did uh facing him in practice help you guys um defensively? I mean, I guess if you face a guy like that enough times during the week, you know, what whatever you're gonna you know to come up with on Friday or Saturday night doesn't probably seem nearly as nearly as difficult. Is is that sort of a a, a good way to to put that? Um, definitely. I still remember the my sophomore year, the first practice we had in pads. He literally cut back on the entire defense and shook all of us. I still remember that vividly. Um, but yeah, just what everybody was saying, he's he's somebody where every time he touched the ball, you expect something big to happen. And it just so happened, it, it always did. You know, he always broke big runs. I was actually on that kickoff return against Wynette that he took to the house. And I think that was the open the second half. And I just remember him saying over and over again, we're going to the house right now, to the house, to the house. And just like that, it happened. and. I just set the tone for the half, and we were able to come on and just dominate. And he led the way definitely for us from his sophomore all the way to his senior year. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I I know how important he was, and he was so important, I think, um, to what you guys did offensively that you know Punaho decidedly said, you know, we're gonna take him out of that, that title game, and you know what that ultimately meant was, you know, I guess that left the floodgates somewhat open for some of the other things that were happening, especially in the passing game. Um, you know, maybe Kenzie talk about sort of um, you know, what did that focus on the run? I mean, I think you guys can execute regardless of what they're scheming. But you know, how did that make the passing game a little easier for you guys, or, or what did that do? Sort of that focus on the run game. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, up front they're really good. Just their linebackers and their D line. Um, even the year prior, so I felt like it was kind of one of those games we had to we had to throw to run. You know to start the game and, you know, honestly, call it to Mateos, in my opinion, might be the best receiver in state history. Um, I, I didn't, I don't think anybody was guarding him, you know, from his junior to his senior year. And then obviously, you know, Kainoa, Bryson Ventura, Makana Tawai, those guys had big games too. Um, but I mean, you look like, you know, Punahou was playing good coverage. Just those guys are making those one-on-one plays. And, um, you know, like, we were saying before Andrew got on, you know, I think like a lot of these things, they don't really happen unless you got, you know, the guys up front that's giving you the time to, to make those reads and those throws. Um, you know, how, how were you guys, how, how do you feel you guys did protection wise against Punaho, um, Andrew? I think we did pretty good. I mean, hence the, you know, the scoreboard, how we ran it up all the way. Well, you know, Carlo Timotel had that four tugs and everything, but like, I mean, Protection wise, with me, uh, Derek Sopoia, uh, you got Aladdin, you got Brett, you got Jordan Angasiva as my right tackle, 
and uh, like even though Tyler at the same time too, when Jordan went down, like those were the guys up front. Like we call it the Trojan, the Wall of Tor- like Troy and stuff. So like it was something that I, we built off. I don't think I got shot one time that year. I don't think I got touched. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, um, you know, and we'd be remiss to to not mention, like you said, you know, Kalakala Timoteo, you know, um, you know that I, I can you guys think of a um, maybe you for you, Kenzie, you know, as of, of all the receive the receivers that obviously you've had the um, ability to to play to play with and and uh, mm-hmm. you know be um, you know be guys that you could throw to, you know, where does he rank as far as those kinds of guys? Uh, he's right up there. He's right up there with, you know, guys that are in the in the NFL right now, like Gabe Davis, Trey Quan Smith, guys that play with that UCF, um, you know, if not more talented. Um I say Kala is Kala is unbelievable. And you know, he's at Adam State now, you know, and I think he's gonna do great things there. So, you know, that's my boy and I mean look I mean, you just look at the film, bro. He's he's a beast. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think like uh you know, that that team, I mean, offensively, like all those weapons, and you know, like I said, a lot of those, a lot of the defense, I think, is is, is underrated just because of what mm-hmm. the sheer output. And I think, um, it's it's arguable to think that you know all those offenses that were were um, in existence that year, St. Louis, Poon Hall, all these guys, like you know, they they'll put up numbers on. on, on it doesn't matter like how how good you you may play defense, they're going to score. And I think even for them, they've got good defenses, but you know, it's it's just you know people are going to make plays. Um, you know, I think we're heading on to about the 30 minute mark. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more and I, I, I think you guys probably saw someone that dropped in on there. Um, it might be kind of cool if we can get Rod in here for a little bit, but, um, uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll just, uh, what I did want to talk about for a little bit was, um, so obviously the, the news over the last couple of days was, um, the commitment that, you know, McKenzie has made to play in Tallahassee. Um. Talk about sort of what what went into that, and um, you know, um, what what's the future going to hold, uh, at least from from your um, your expectation. Hi, it's me. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, just to see, there's a great opportunity. You know, I had a, a good career at UCF, and you know, I just feel like you know the right time to turn the page and you know move on from there. And you know, I'm just it's just a three and a half hour drive from up in Orlando to Tally, so. You know, I'm really excited about the opportunity, and you know, you know I think it's gonna be good. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I, I think he's he's super excited to get out. But we're gonna have to wait for a little bit. But uh, um, an- another another thing I I thought was kind of cool that that worked out was um, you know uh, you know Kaimana. Um, you know, I saw this yeah I saw this the other day, and you know it, it's it's a little it, it was I think what just just around that time I think maybe COVID sort of came on onto the scene but um you know to to get this national football honor society you know this this kind of distinction you know um you know obviously you had a lot of accolades to your career right um and in the mountain okay. west but you know where does where does this rank for you to to get this kind of honor um you know academically i mean it's definitely up there um you know my parents always preach to do good in school and to do good on the football field so you know this is just another the other thing for me was just, you know, do you just grind on the football field and you grind in the classroom. And, you know, me being a captain, I really try to hold myself to that level to, you know, allow other guys to try and follow and try and put themselves at that that level where, you know, you want to excel in everything you do. And, you know, this is one of the awards that I'm proud of. You know, it's not always, you know, athletics that you can do great in, but sometimes you can also do good in school. Yeah, um, you know, we... Um, one of the things, uh, you know, um, you know, I, I did want to talk about, you know, and right after this, we'll, um, we'll, 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 we'll jump off for a little so we can try to get, you know, coach Rod on maybe Kenzie, you, you can, you can hang out for a bit too. Um, but, um, you know, uh, one of something that came out recently, I think it was August, you know, um, you know, kind of a, you know, I think a sad story, um, you know, just, just kind of heartbreaking for me, you know, is, was to hear, you know, the, um, the passing of EC Holani, you know, uh, you know, Hilo, Hilo uh, kid, you know, uh, I think, um, like, I, like I was telling you guys when we first got on, you know, kind of a, an unknown sort of commodity. I think he, he worked real hard, you know, I, you know, I think he earned every bit of that, you know, his, his uh, ability to, to be able to put on that Kansas jersey. And, you know, it was just sort of a, 
a sad situation. And, you know, I think for you, you know, Andrew, if you could sort of, um, you know, talk about sort of, uh, you know, you know, your maybe your recollections or anything you can share about um, EC and sort of, you know, what he meant to you, you know, as a football player, but also as a as a person. Yeah. <clears throat> so EC Halani, that was my day one boy. When I first got there, uh, I was transferred from JUCO for one year and I was over there and he basically showed me love. He was the only uh, uh, Polynesian over there. And I found out when he was from Hawaii and then like that even like helped me out a bit because having somebody from back home, it made it feel like home. Uh, same time he like, he touched everybody, uh, just him himself, like his smile, like even like through the bad days and like he won't tell you if anything's going bad or not. Like he'll just smile at you. And like he said, everything's good. And he just like go about his day and try to like uplift everybody around him. And like, with him having like touched me, uh, my boys like Api, Api Mane, uh, Dajo Lopetti, uh, Jack Lovasa, my boy Josh and uh, Matt, those are the Polynesians that were up there at the time. And when he was up there, we all hanged out and just having him around us was like a great atmosphere because he would always just be, uh, like I said, just smiling and uh, uh, even comes to football, he always gave it his hundred, uh, hundred percent. He was always humble. He never really talked. He was just a quiet guy, and just humble every time. And just what he did, like how he impacted me and my boys, it was like something unmeasurable. Like just to like hear about him, even though I talked to him like two days before he passed, like out of nowhere, like it was very heartbroken. Like for all of us, it, it just like took a toll on our community, but like we were there for each other to uplift and a couple of my boys now who are over there in Hilo and I wish I could be there, but I have like nursing school and everything going on, but they're over there paying their respect and everything. So uh, even shout out to EC's family and everything for showing love when we're up here every time. And uh, yeah, just rest, rest easy, uh, big six. Appreciate everything you've done for us. So um, we're gonna go and take like a like a quick break, um, just so I can try to get Coach Rod in. I'm pretty sure pretty sure he's he's, uh, he's gonna be happy to see all three of you guys in at the same time, and and you know we'll we'll talk a little bit more. But uh, so uh, hold on, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna go get Rod in here, and we'll, we'll be back in a little bit. Well, you know, coaching ten years, looking back, um, is probably the best for guys in. Um, and I told Kalani, it wasn't the athletic prowess. It wasn't, I mean, yeah, of course, they're athletes. Like, we get athletes all the time. But these guys were special in that they were um, probably the closest, probably the um, most focused um, group that, that, that we've had. And you look, you look at where they went and what they did and the impact that they made on their teams. Um, it just speaks volumes. And, and, and a lot of the guys, um, like I said, graduated from college. You know, the guys right now, they're working on their grad school. And, um, um, you know, and that includes Vi, that includes uh, Noah Wilson, you know. And, and um, you know, these, a lot of these guys were first graduates in their family. You know, so um, like I was saying, anytime you do something for the first time, it's always tough. It's always hard, um, so you need um, you need to do that barrier. You need to uh, bust down the walls, and and these guys definitely did it for Milani, obviously. Uh, but you know when we were going through it, like I said, um, you know the word championship. You know I've only watched it from the stand. So you know well, while we had that magical season, um, it's always about the journey, and the journey is always um, um, great, and it was special. And, um, you know, you look at these guys, you take away all the athletic prowess, you take all the all the accolades and all, and, and they're just great guys, great individuals um, and team leaders. You know what I mean? Um, you know, Mana Padello, I just feel bad for him because, you know, a lot of guys, including himself, you know, where, where – you make all day and you figure you've been doing doing good in school and you expect a scholarship, you know, that's the, that's your mindset, you know. And um 
you know, he, he didn't get it, but, um, you know, that filled his motivation for, for college and, and what he did in college, he did in high school, you know, and, um, you you look at the impact that, that Drew has made on his team and, you know, kid from Halabo played for Milani. I mean, shoot, guys playing for Kansas, you know, he was starting at Kansas and, um, did well at Pima first and, um, you talk to his coaches and shoot, man, they, they got nothing but, but good things, great things to say about him. And then obviously you look at Kenzie and the impact that he's made. And I just told him yesterday because we spent the day together that I knew he was going to be good. I didn't know he was going to be that good, you know, and that fast. And um, like I said, man, you know, these guys, they made great impacts, not just on middle line football, on wherever they've been. And then, uh, that's a tribute to all their parents. You know, their, their parents are, are, if you look at each kid and, and that doesn't even include um, the guys that's not on this Zoom, um, the leaders on, on that team, you know, uh, Kanoa Wilson, you know, that, that that's a dude where, you know, it's unfortunate if he had been three inches taller, shoot, he, he'd have a hundred offers. And, um, but that guy, his work ethic and um, just his, character you know he kind of and we had a whole bunch of them and uh, I was saying though it, we in the beginning of the season I was worried because these guys were enacting the movie uh, Planet of the Apes and I'd gone home from camp and fell asleep <laughs> I went to shower came out right. and just laid said I was gonna get Caesar. a little five minute rest on my bed on the air conditioning and next thing you know I woke up the next morning with 20 uh, missed calls and these guys were running wild on the in the gym and doing that planning on the East Day, so I was kind of worried. But... Oh no! <laughs> oh. But what it's, happened it's, after that? It's ironic that um, you know, that these guys uh, <laughs> got it back together and and they they helped Milani break through that that barrier and put the word championship up the belt. Oh, his his audio is not doing good. Um, but you know, uh, obviously, um, you know, you guys were, you know, important to, and, and did a heck of a lot for, for coach, coach Rod in his years. And, you know, you obviously got a lot of good, you know, a lot of great things to say and, and, and well-deserved, but, um, what, what about Rod? So what, what are, what are some of your stories about coach Rod? Like, like, I, I know you guys obviously played for coach at the college level now, <laughs> But um, you know, like what kind of what kind of impacts, hopefully good, <laughs> has has he has he made that that you guys can say, hey, you know what, um, th- that's that's the reason you know I'll, I'll always remember or you know uh, like like I'm I'm thankful to have played for a guy like like Coach Rod. Uh, let's start let's start with you, Andrew. I mean, what well, Coach Rod taught us, like you know, tough love. <laughs> That man had tough love. <laughs> uh, just like everything he did, it was everything like out of love. Like when we mess up, we be doing it in 220s, even though like Kenzie and Kamada of them is the one sprinting out in the front and the linemen's in the back and we're like dying. <laughs> but like, you know, Coach York had that like mentality, like, you know, once when somebody's down, like he, he wants the players to like pick each other up. Like he would be the coach. He'll coach and everything, but like he always knew that uh, what you call that, like he de- he depended on the players to speak up and everything. So like with him like having that emphasis and everything, like that's like what made me like and mold me into everything. Like me being uh, one of the leaders on like my team or my previous team Kansas, and just being one of that like that like contribute to what like leadership, the leadership role that I took uh, at Kansas. Come on, you got any stories of football, Coach Rod? <laughs> um, shoot, I mean, there's plenty. Definitely, there's a lot. But uh, you know, just I was actually his uh, teacher's assistant because he coaches a uh, he's a teacher at the school, and so I mean, it's funny because if you do bad in the game or you mess up, you come to class and all of a sudden it's like a film study session. He's over here pulling up huddle oh, and he's over here going over plays, and I'm like, Coach, come on, man, we're in school right now. So, I mean, that, that was definitely always something to look forward to, whether you did good, whether you did bad. Um, you know, he was definitely going to talk to you about it in class. Um, 
and Kenzie, you know, you, you've, uh, you've had, you know, uh, obviously he's a guy that, you know, you know, saw the potential and everything. And, you know, uh, Hey, what, what, uh, what have you learned from coach Rod at, that's helped you along your journey, especially as you, you've headed into college and, and your career so far? Shoot, everything, man. Just like Drew said, the tough love part. You know, I know there's a couple headsets and a couple pairs of glasses that, that's been broken because of me <laughs> doing some bonehead stuff. But because at the end of the day, like, man, coach is always riding for us, you know, like making sure we, we fed, you know, like at beach runs or, you know, whether it's staying at his house, like in his garage on the air mattress, taking us to eat zippy, like, you know, normal coaches aren't doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, just everything, man. Like, that's why, that's why, like, when I come home, I still like, like go see him and hang out with him. Cause, you know, I, I know I wouldn't have had, you know, the opportunities I had at, in college or high school without him, you know? So, you know, coach, coach York is family. So, and, and, you know, I want to coach one day and, you know, I, I hope to take some of the characteristics he's got, you know, with me wherever I go. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I still remember like the, the first, the, like that first year when Rod started and, and yeah, I, I don't even play for him. And I was kind of like, Oh, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of scared of the, <laughs> like, Oh, <laughs> He but was, you know, hey, 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 one thing about Coach York though, right? His teams come to play for him, bro. Like, yeah. because they know we know like he loves us. So like, and mm -hmm. you know, I've been in situations in college where, you know, it's not the same thing. Like, you know, players don't want to play for coaches sometimes, and just getting your team to play for you in high school that that speaks volumes about the kind of guy he is. Yeah, for sure. Hey, yeah. Uh... He's gonna. You, you you got a. Is that like a, a plate lunch kind of compliment right there, or was that was that um? Nah, I'm not just kidding. But um, oh, a funny story about the plate lunch though. <laughs> every time, every time he's telling the offensive line, "Hey, you guys gotta lose weight." Every time we show up to his place, he always say, "Hey, that's a plate lunch." <laughs> oh, no, and we look at it like, "Hey, he told us to lose weight." <laughs> What's up with these plate lunches? What is this? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, uh, so you know, I, I know every team is is a is a special one for you, you know, Rod, and you know they're all different. But you know, um, you know, for you, like um, this group of guys you know, that you had, you know, this, this particularly this this year, you know, um, like where does where does it rank rank for you amongst all all the teams that you've coached, you know, over your career? Um, I mean, obviously it's special, but you know, we're like, like, if you gotta, like, if you gotta talk about yourself or you gotta talk about the team, then it probably wasn't good enough. You know what I'm saying? So we don't need to talk about it. Like, um, other people talk about it. Uh, for me, I don't ever live in the past. You know, uh, I've always uh, been around my uncles and they sit around and have a few and they talk about their high school days. And so for me personally, I've never kept anything in the past no no trophies no accolades no nothing um you come to my house you you won't know that i even coach for milan except all my clothes i wear are milan shirts obviously um but you come to my house you look at my wall my wife put all that the rams raiders but for me this is mine right here and i got the helmets and i need signatures fellas i got the helmets of um, all their teams you know there's Kansas right there, UCF, um, you got Oregon Ducks there, Rex, Vi, Utah's Jordan. I got another Kansas. I got like, I need uh, Kenzie to sign this or UCF one right there. And then guess what I got, bro? The only thing I really kept was a scoring live one right there, just because it was a nice um, helmet. <laughs> yeah. Got Rex, BYU, and then I got Michigan, but. Yeah, the um, like I said, man, it's the, it's all about the journey, you know. Usually you say that, and people are like, yeah, because you know, you guys didn't win the championship, but um, even when we won the championship, you know, I told the guys, hey, Monday, it's back to the grind, you know. There's, it's nothing uh, special on Monday, like we get a holiday or anything or a day off or 
or whatever. And, and I learned that from De La Salle. You know, De La Salle is a team that, that wins um, the North Cal. We visited them. And they win the championship on Saturday. Monday, they're all right back in the weight room. All uh, 60 players. Um, and it's like they don't even talk about it. But, you know, I, I got to reiterate that these kids are, you know, they don't play for me. I don't, I don't ever tell them to play for me. I tell them you play for each other. You know, we, we keep it simple because, you know, even when I play, I never play for my coach. I, I play because I want to make my family proud. And at the same time, um, whether they knew it or not, they're going to be brothers for life. Um, the tough love part is because life is, life is not fair. You know, life is not fair. And uh, you're, you're going to experience adversity. Everybody talks about the championship, the greatness, and all of that. And I use Montana Vasa as an example. Everybody talks about him. He's such a great guy, two, two-time Super Bowl champion, but nobody talks about the five times he got cut from the NFL. Nobody talks about where they, they give him the pink slip and now he got to go back on the grind and he switched different teams, you know. Um, and, and, and it's tough to do. And and, and, then, and then, you know, he got crossed him at a certain time with the Denver Broncos. You know, you got Terrell Davis. You got um, uh, John Elway, you know, and you got a great defense and and, uh, you, you know, they put it together and Ma was able to win those two-time Super Bowl champs. But I look at Ma as defined as, as um, how he fought through adversity. So with me and the boys, I'm always about tough love because that's life. You know what I mean? So anybody can be good when, when you, you're winning and everything's good. But you got times where you got to face adversity. You know, Ma not getting his um, scholarship. Not what you're going to do. Shoot. Look what he did. You know, um, Drew had a mix up on his um, his scholarship offer. He's supposed to be at Utah State. You know, then Sa- San Diego State gave away his scholarship. Now he got no scholarship. What you gonna do? You gonna cry about it? You gonna do something about it? Uh, look what Andrew did. Did his thing. Didn't cry about it. Um, and went, went to work. He got blessed with a in his first year at Pima. He got blessed with a with a Kansas offer. Look at Ken. I mean, he went up. Kenzie grinded for it, and I tell everybody this: you know, he got he got recruited by Scott Frost, not because of me, but because of his hard work. You know, he he went up there, Oregon Cal did his thing. Um, he did keep a fly sweep, ran yards on the sideline to impress the Oregon when he was scholarship left. You know, and, and then uh, you know he made an impact on Scott Frost, and then he he went up again, no scholarship. He went up on his own. You know, he didn't even tell me. I found out when he was up there, and he went into the yeah, one MVP at camp. Um, you know, a little Holly kid from from the Rock, from Hawaii. You know, and yeah. this guy went and outperformed um, all those quarterbacks, including the, the big time quarterback. I think it was Tate or whatever. You know, a five star, ranked number five five in the nation, and uh, and he beat them all out. You know, th- then he went back up and um, and did his thing. You know, he said, but so that's what the tough love is because. You're not gonna be able to um, uh, simulate tough, you know, that, that those adversity times, you know. But when they're grinding on the 220s, um, and really, let me tell you about this. This is all Salila Malapia. This is all Coach Stills. You know, Coach Stills was a guy who was 58 and 0 at St. Louis. Um, Coach Stills was a guy that, as a D lineman, he was all Pac-12. At, at, you know, they say he's like six foot, but he's really like 5'11". And uh, this dude was blocking punts if you watch his thing. So he's done it, you know what I mean? So what I did was I hired him and I listened to him and whatever he told me to do, I did. And, and all those things are credited to um, Silila Malapiai and, and the toughness. Uh, today, you know, we got our guys boxing. They sparring with the boxers. First they spar with each other and then they go and box with the, you know, and that, that gives us, because when you get punched in the mouth, what you gonna do? You can, you can train, you can do all this, look look all pretty. But when you get on the line of scrimmage and, and you get smacked in the mouth, um, yeah, you know what I mean? What you gonna do? And, and and for our guys, if you look at the impact of our guys, guys like Mana Padello, Dayton Furuta, they're not just part of the team. They're the captains, they're the leaders. Uh, it's like I said, they're locker room game changers. You know what I mean? You look at uh, Dylan, you look at Kenzie, when they go up there, um, they're not just, Winning a couple games, man, they dominating. They they making their impact. You look at Drew, 
goes up there, he's the signal caller. You know what I mean? He and the quarterback touch the ball every single time. They're, 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 they're leaders on the team. Uh, you look at Rex Mono and what he's done. And again, he, he was um, it was the first time somebody ever got recruited to out of middle line to, um, to Oregon. So you look at Jordan Agasiba, um, you know, yeah. Grays didn't pan out, went to Pima. By the time he was done with Pima, he's the number one ranked offensive lineman in the nation. Um, again, going through adversity. And that's what it's all about is, um, and, and these guys will not just face adversity now or in the past. They will always face adversity through life because that's what life is. And, um, you know, especially during these times, coronavirus times, you know, it's hard times. Um, all of us got family issues. Shoot, I got personal problems and, and I've fought through them and I've, and I've always come through. And it's, it's not... You know, it's that saying, right? You know, you get knocked down t- 10 times, you better get up 11 times, you know. Um, don't, don't feel sorry for yourself and, and keep grinding because ain't nobody going to baby you. Ain't nobody going to gonna feel sorry for you. Only person that care about you is you and your close circle and, and your family. And at the end of the day, you look at all these kids, and I, I can go down the line. Um, they all got great parents. They all got great parents. You know, um, yeah, we all got problems, but these guys, um, their parents support them so much. Um, and these parents were also supportive of, of the, the program in their own way. And, um, you know, you, you, you put you, you put these guys, we didn't know at the time, but, you know, when you're looking back on in perspective and, and what they've done, um, even if we didn't win the championship, it would still be a, a special, special group of guys. And, and again, it's about the journey. It's about the experiences. It's about the relationship. And, and I've learned that it's all about the relationships. It's relationships before the mission. It cannot be the mission before the relationships. And, and that's what makes these guys special. And the way we run our program, hey, we straight up. You know what I'm saying? We, these guys want to play for middle line and they want to go. And um, once they get there, they sign the contract, work hard or get off. And... Um, these guys have, have just been so um, special in my life. Uh, and they also set the tone. They set the tone for, for a lot of, you know, guys like these three guys, special in my heart, um, Dita Fruta, uh, KK Padello, and um, Jake Cofelli. Those are the three guys. That's the only jerseys I got, I got in my closet right now. I'm saving them. And uh, because those three guys who came before these guys um, they set the tone for that championship team. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate. It's my fault. We lost the, the 2013 one. But, um, you know, I, I've learned. And uh, things happen for a reason. You know, things happen for a reason. You know, it made me hungrier. Uh, made these guys hungrier. And then and we came back. And, uh, you know, just I just love these guys, man. We, we don't get to talk much. But whenever I see these guys, like, like uh, and I talk to them, and you know, it's just, yeah, you know, it's hard because I mean, it's not hard, but it gets emotional for me because yeah, I was their coach at once, but now I'm a fan, and I'm a big fan of them in life. I'm a big fan of them in uh, in what they do, and and more importantly, like I'm a big fan of, of what they have become, young men uh, that contribute to society and are great to their to their girlfriends and their and their uh, just anybody in their life and. Um, you know, I was blessed to coach these guys, man. We we were blessed, but yeah. Um, can, can you guys come back? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know, um, you know, like for me, you know, like uh, I think around this time that you guys, you know, were in that title game that year in particular. I I want to say like that's sort of when, you know, for scoring live, we we kind of were starting. You know, we 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 just like. Coach Rod said we had to pay our dues too. You know, I remember when we first started and got like eight thousand views in a year, and I'd be like happy. And you know, I think your your year was sort of when we really started taking off. And you know, like for me, like you know, I, I'm you know I does those are that that's kind of that year that I kind of remember a lot. You know, and and you know it's it's been great to sort of watch you know all all the progression of of you guys, and you know, and and we've been blessed to be able to um you know have some small part in you know hopefully helping you guys you know reach 
where you guys you know have gone and you know hopefully it's it's been it's continues to help you know other student athletes even if it's only to be able to have like that you know that sort of um spotlight for even their high school career you know that's sort of what you know we were aiming to do and you know but you know for you guys you know I, it's just been great to um to be able to follow you guys beyond you know what has been you know just the high school you know on saturdays and stuff and now sundays we you know whether it's you know, when we're watching, you know, Kenzie or, or, you know, Dylan Gabriel now at UCF or, you know, it's Talia at Maryland, at Maryland or, you know, Tula now in the pros and, and it goes on, you know, I think like, um, it's, it's been a blessing and, you know, I'm, I'm glad I can, you know, like, like, like coach said, you know, it's it, adversity sometimes has to make you adapt and, you know, for us, we got no games to cover. So we, well, what are we going to do? And I thought, you know what, we can start talking to to guys that we we you know weren't able to to keep up with and you know it's it's always nice to to catch up and you know we're kind of like coach too you know we we got so much to do with the present that we don't really have time to kind of think about the past but you know with what there's going on with covid and 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 you know the the state of things you know it's it's been great to be able to look back and and to see what what guys are doing and you know i was really glad that we got a chance to talk uh to you to you three and coach too but yeah, um, you know, uh, I, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Uh, I think we're going to start tapping out on the, um, on the limit and, you know, I ain't going to keep you guys anymore. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out. I know it's getting pretty late for Drew out in Kansas too, I think. So, uh, you know, um, any, uh, any shout outs before we, uh, we head out, um, let's start with, um, we'll, we'll start with, uh, coach. Don't go too long though. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. What do you mean? Shout out to what your wife i don't know whatever <laughs> <laughs> no just shout out to um the rest of the guys that, that weren't able to make it but um all the players you know the, that have played for Milani, not for me but for Milani high school you know i appreciate um all the hard work and i appreciate just watching you guys and you know just um wish you guys the best of luck and um let's go baby go go kenzie yeah, uh, speaking of Kenzie, you got any shout outs uh for uh anybody? Yeah, shout out to the old line, always holding it down. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to get Andrew. Uh, I wanted to get um I wanted to get Jordan Agasiva. I, I I texted him and, and I, I got this number from Rod and you know we weren't able to get him. Maybe we'll maybe we'll catch up with him uh later on, but you know, um yeah, obviously shout another out to really, the big boys. Really important uh part of that, that championship team. Um Kaimana, you got any shout outs? I mean, shoot, just shout out to all the coaches, you know, everybody who made high school definitely uh, a time to remember. Um, shout out to Kenzie, Drew, Coach York. Um, shout out to my family for supporting me. And thank you very much for having us on. Yes, uh, shout out Scoring Live. <laughs> and you, and Score Live. Big B. Drew, you got shout out uh, Bill Hostro. Drew, you got any, uh, <laughs> any uh, shout outs? I mean, shout out to all the boys, you know, like before us, you know, people at Milani and everything, like everybody was like a foundation to that, you know, that high school and everything. Uh, you know, just shout out to all the young ones, like who wants to make it out there? Like y'all can do it. It's not that hard. Just put your head down in the dirt and everything. Just grind it out. Don't worry about anybody else. Just grind it out. Things are going to come your way no matter what. Yeah, yeah, those are those are some true words right there. And uh, you know, again, I want to thank uh, Andrew Tovey, Rod York, uh, Kamana Padello, and uh, of course Mackenzie Milton for uh, taking some time out and uh, talking story with us. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to catch up with you guys for sure. Um, you know, I'm looking out, looking for big things from you, Kenzie. Like I always have. You know, in that beginning when we talked. You know, I think right around that time you got that UH offer, and you know, we was we was, we was talking, and I was like, you know. I think something's going to happen and you know I, i'm 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 really proud for what you've accomplished and you know like like coach said you know all all the rest of you guys too you know like i think um you know it's it's been like i said great to watch you guys do what you've done and and how you've you know not only excelled on the field but off the field too so um thank you brother thank you everybody for uh tuning in um tune in later on this week we're gonna we're gonna talk some sneakers i think i'm gonna we'll have a guest on um Ah, someone from uh, kind kind of from the from the you know the earlier years, but uh, a, a basketball guy, and I think uh, you know 
if you guys want to talk sneaks too, just let me know. I don't know uh, if you guys are sneakerheads, but you know that's uh, that's another another segment that we we sort of do on this uh, stream. So uh, anyway, uh, stay in touch, guys. Um, I'm yeah, glad I, I got you. a chance to connect with all of you, and thanks for making this happen. Uh, to everybody out in the on our Twitch channel, thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll check you later. Okay, bye.